Hey, welcome to a Friday edition of Morning Scone. Hope you're doing great. As always, presented by Get Signed, digital autograph app for your smartphone, downloaded in your iTunes or Apple Play Store, developed by an LSU alum. So please download the app, use it, and we appreciate it very, very much as always. G E T S Y N D. So uh, LSU back on the diamond tonight, hosting Arkansas in a massive series and game three of the Pels Warrior series as the series shifts to New Orleans. Let's start with LSU baseball, then we'll get to the Pels. Uh, obviously, just a massive series for LSU. And a couple of things to consider uh, with Arkansas coming in at 13-8, and eight, uh, leading the SEC. This is a series that LSU has dominated. We've talked about this a little bit on AFR during the week, but... This is a series that LSU has won 12 of the last 13. They won two of three, uh, 12 of the last 13 series. Uh, they won two of three last year uh, in Arkansas. They, of course, swept two years ago in the Rally Possum Series in Baton Rouge. So it's one of those statistical oddities where you have a really good team, and Arkansas is that. They're a really good program. Dave Van Horn's a really good coach. And for whatever reason, LSU's just owned them. Uh, if you look like to, to football, you know Florida has beaten Kentucky like 30 straight years in football. Okay, that's like a statistical anomaly, but typically Florida's been really good and Kentucky hasn't. Uh, so you can understand that to an extent. With this baseball series, it's just been an oddity where Arkansas can't figure out a way to beat LSU. Now make no mistake, Arkansas is better than LSU this year. Arkansas leads the SEC in team batting average at 310. They've hit 68 home runs on the season, and they're third in the in the SEC in staff ERA, and they have a legit ace in Blaine Knight, who is 7-0 on the season. This team is better than LSU in every single facet. Two, two issues. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll continue on that just to scare you a little bit more. Uh, Blaine Knight, who's pitching tonight, game one. Blaine Knight has not lost yet this year. He's 7-0. He's beaten Brady Singer from Florida. Remember that guy? Uh, he's beaten Casey Mize from Auburn, who may very well be the first pick taken in the draft. And he's beaten Sean Jelly from Kentucky, who's the reigning SEC Pitcher of the Year. So, um, he's really good. Blaine Knight's really good, and Arkansas's really good. The They have lost two of their last three SEC openers. When they were swept at Mississippi State, and they lost to South Carolina which is obviously a good team that's coming on, as LSU saw. So there's a big opportunity for LSU this weekend. Arkansas is 13-8 in the league. LSU is 10-11. and With three games, even if you win two of them, you can pull Arkansas closer while you elevate yourself in the standings. Or gosh, if you could sweep, then you're tied with Arkansas after this weekend. So um, I, you obviously aren't expecting to sweep Arkansas, but there are some things in your favor. Uh, a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, Arkansas is, uh, they had two pretty significant pieces uh, questionable for this weekend. Uh, their second baseman, veteran Carson Chatty, who it's 350, he's got nine bombs. He's a senior, you should recognize the name. Um, he took a ball off his hand a couple of weeks ago and missed last weekend's series against Alabama. So he's questionable for this weekend, which is big. I mean, that's a significant bat in the middle of the lineup for Arkansas. That may not be there. And their closer is a guy named Matt Cronin. He's a lefty, throws low, mid-90s. He's really good. He's second in the SEC with nine saves. And he has mono. And he, both guys are traveling this weekend to Baton Rouge, but both are questionable. As of Wednesday, Dave Van Horn said, look, if we had to play today, neither guy would be available. So that could be something that benefits LSU greatly if Dave Van Horn doesn't have his closer in the bullpen. And if you take Carson Chatty's bat out of the line, and look, there's plenty of offense there for Arkansas without Chatty, but it obviously any chink in the armor is is helpful. Um, the other thing to keep in mind that may go LSU's way is is the records at home and on the road. Arkansas, oddly enough, has kind of mirrored LSU in that respect this year. They're uh, two and seven in SEC games away from home. Meanwhile, they're eleven and one at Baum Stadium in SEC games. They're just a different team at home than they are on the road. Sound familiar? That's basically LSU. LSU is 7-2 and two at home in conference games. So while Arkansas is 2-7 and seven on the road in the SEC, LSU is 7-2 at home in the SEC. 
Uh, Arkansas may well be without its starting second baseman and closer. LSU, you hope, is getting a little bit healthier, although they probably won't have Josh Smith this weekend, as Paul Maneri said, unless something, uh, a drastic improvement happened for uh, for Josh overnight. But it, it Paul's teams tend to hit the accelerator late in the season when they need to, and this is when they absolutely need to. Uh, Arkansas is much better than LSU. Make no mistake, Arkansas sh- should win this series, but Arkansas has struggled to win on the road. And something else to consider, Arkansas leaves Sunday... Uh, recently anyway, because of their recent struggles losing at Mississippi State and then losing the series to, uh, or getting swept at State and then losing the series to South Carolina. Arkansas has left their Sunday spot a TBA. So even if you lose game one to Blaine Knight, there'd be no crime. If Mikhail Hilliard could come back in game two and deliver what he did last week against Ole Miss and be really, really good at home, you go into game three with TBA against TBA. And, you know, Sundays in the SEC, wacky things can happen. So Let's see if LSU can go figure out a way to scratch across two wins this weekend and put themselves in a situation with the worst team in the conference coming into the SEC into the box next weekend with LSU playing for something significant. That would be that'd be a lot of fun if it could go that way. So LSU and Arkansas. Something else, another note that Palmineri made this week was uh, Jake Slaughter is going to start at third base. Uh, he made that announcement so that it wouldn't be um, speculative for playing it by ear, and I love that. And we've talked a lot about Jake on on Morning Scone and just throughout the year. And in part because he's been enigmatic. You know, Slaughter's the guy with the big pop potential in his bat, but he also strikes out a lot. And you know, he's like I mentioned, he's a bit of an enigma. He's a great talent, but he just hasn't fit, found out how to maximize it just yet. Um, but I'll take it. And the, the comparison I'll give that I think most people can relate to, even if it's a major league comparison, is Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge last year struck out more than anybody in baseball, but he also hit 50 home runs. So you want that guy in your lineup understanding you're going to take a lot of bad at-bats, a lot of bad swings. He's going to strike out in big situations. But he's also got the opportunity with one swing to give you four runs potentially. And there just aren't many guys in LSU's roster that have that potential. So you got to have that guy in the lineup. Understand that this is a team, especially against Arkansas, that can hit. Like you got to score. And... This is a team that isn't likely to string together four or five consecutive hits in an inning to try to put up a crooked number. You want to do that with one swing of the bat. And Slaughter is one of the guys that gives you the best opportunity to do that. So yes, I I want Jake Slaughter in there. Quite honestly, you understand that this LSU team is 12th in the SEC in Team ERA. And this is one of the the worst fielding teams that Palmineri's had. You're not built to win games two to nothing. You have to score. So give me guys in the lineup that are going to give me an opportunity to put up crooked numbers and to score. So I like the fact that Jake Slaughter is going to be in there. So LSU, uh, Arkansas, all, uh, 7 o'clock tonight, 7 o'clock Saturday, 2 o'clock Sunday. Only the Saturday game is on uh, cable TV on uh, SEC Network. But, of course, if you're in Baton Rouge, you can listen uh, on uh, Eagle 98.1, our sister station. Or, of course, you can watch on SEC Network+. Plus. So LSU, Arkansas, huge series, just massive series. This weekend, this really is LSU's uh, postseason lives that they're fighting for. Remember, we, we've talked about it. If you, there's a video here, if you want to go back and watch it, uh, LSU's blueprint uh, to host a regional. It's possible. I'm not going to say it's likely, but it certainly is plausible. You win two against Arkansas, you sweep Bama, who's terrible. You win two against Auburn, and you're at 17 conference wins, and you're right there on the cusp. And I think if you were to go to Hoover and play into the weekend, where Maneri's teams have really played well in the past. Um, you'd be hosting a regional. So Super Regional's out, but um, you know it's it's the same method uh, that Florida State followed last year where they were 500 in ACC play, but got hot late, won the ACC tournament, and they wound up uh, earning the 12th overall seed and ended up hosting a regional. So it's possible, but LSU's got to do work this weekend. they got to go get two wins. Um, other thing, uh, Pell's Warriors game three is tonight. Uh, the Warriors are a four and a half Point favorite on the road. So, um, look, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that New Orleans gets one of the next two. And if they replicate the performance in game uh, in game two here tonight in game three, I think they can get this one. Uh, New Orleans was as efficient as they've been. If you go look at the stat sheet, they led just about every category. They led in points in the paint. They led in fast break points. They led in steals. They had fewer turnovers. They shot a higher field goal percentage. They shot a higher three-point percentage. New Orleans played just about as flawlessly as they could. 
in Golden State, and they still lost by five. Of course, what everybody's talked about is the free throw disparity, so that's something I definitely want to keep an eye on, is with the, the, the series shifting to New Orleans, can the home team, which is built around attacking the rim more so than the jump shooting team, get to the free throw line more? Can AD and Drew Holiday get some superstar calls? And I hope they can. I still don't think New Orleans is winning this series, but I think they're capable of winning one of these next two games at home to make sure it goes back to Golden State and at least inject some life back into this series. So um, I thought you know, game two for New Orleans on Tuesday, they played about as well as they could, and they still came up short against the gold standard in the NBA. Uh, they're, they're a four-and-a-half-point dog tonight, but they were a dog first few games against Portland and wound up pulling those out. But those were both, of course, in Portland. So I don't think New Orleans is any... Um, uh, it's, there's no surprise that they're being that they're an underdog. So let's see if they can go out tonight and maybe uh, get a game at home and then make it interesting for for game four. But of course, every, like the thing to watch is going to be can the team that attacks the basket, which is New Orleans, at 66 points in the paint in game two, as opposed to 38 for a Golden State. Can the team that attacks the, the basket get to the line more and maybe win this thing at the free throw line in a close ball game? So uh, that'll do it for this edition of Morning Scone. We will certainly be back tomorrow. I know the Saturday and Sunday uh, episodes have been very popular. Maybe people drinking their Sunday morning coffee or the after church crowd. Uh, Happy to be here for you, and we certainly will this weekend as well. So please hit the red subscribe button down there. Uh, Subscribe to the Matt Moscone YouTube channel. I need to get to 1,000 subscribers. We've gotten almost, almost 500 subscribers in about four or five weeks. So we're averaging about 100 a week, which is great pacing. I'm thrilled for it as people start to find us. But uh, please help us spread the word and download the Signed app, S-Y-N-D, in your iTunes or or your uh, App Store or Google Play. Appreciate y'all. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow morning for Morning Scone.